Hello and welcome to the third episode in this series on natural language processing with Python. In this video we're going to go over how we can take a segment of text and start to organize that segment. So we can put it in alphabetical order and remove redundant words. This way we'll make our data set smaller and easier to work with and we'll build on this in order to to utilize more and more useful functionality to extract the information we like in our programs. So let's get started. We're going to use the Gutenberg corpus that NLTK provides. So we'll go from NLTK.corpus import Gutenberg. Okay, great. So now, because I used it before, I'm going to display the files that are contained within the Gutenberg corpus. So in order to do that, I type Gutenberg, Gutenberg dot file IDs. Okay, so here are here is a list of the files that we can have access to. Gutenberg. And we can see here these are initialization methods and here are some other methods and we'll be using these in our videos in this video. It's alright folks, I'm just getting warmed up. So here we have file IDs which we used and words and we're going to use words in this video in order to analyze um, our text file. So what words does is it looks at the text file and then for us decides what individual uh, segment we're going to be analyzing because you can view text in terms of sentences or words which is obviously a smaller incrementation of that data. So let's use words and because we know what the file IDs are we'll select a book. So let's go ahead and use John Milton's Paradise Lost So, for ease of use, we'll go John Milton, JM, book, equals. And in order to do this, we need to go Gutenberg dot words, and then pass in the parameter of the file ID, and use the literal quotes. Okay, great. So with this, we can see how long it is or how many words there are, more specifically. Okay, almost 100,000, a lot of words. Okay, so let's uh, look at a slice of that. So we'll say a sample equals JM book we'll use our brackets there and we'll take a slice of information so let's grab 100 to 150 and I'll just put JM here okay and if we want to view that we simply go sample JM and here are the words Now, if we go linked here, should be obvious, but that slice was 50, so we can see, okay, we have 50. 
Now, let's use the set function to reduce this further because of this sample, there are going to be repeating words most likely because the and I are commonly used in sentences. And if we're going to analyze text, it's good to have novel information, meaning we just want to have unique words to get a feel for general context and sentiment analysis. So let's use set sample JM. And I'm going to head I'm going to assign a variable to that. Oh one one important thing to notice here is using the set function it doesn't return a list so we won't be able to access it by index value and I'll show a way to productively use sorted a method in order to generate a list that's in order so we kill two birds with one stone we get to create a object that's in order and accessible as if it is a list because it is one okay so set jm equals go ahead and copy and paste that okay and we'll get the same information but I'll print it out anyways so to highlight the previous point that this set is not a list we get a error and we see that set jm you use the type func type built-in Python function to confirm that. So set object does not support indexing. Okay, so that's an issue because we want to be able to index it like a list. So to kill two birds with one stone, we can use sorted. So I'll go sort set. JM equals sorted and do set JM. So let's print that. So we see here that we're now in alphabetical order and we're a list because we see the brackets here. Now notice that the set picked up um, punctuation marks as an in, as an individual word. So so it works well, but it's not going to have the intelligence to distinguish between quotations, punctuation marks, and words. But that's okay. There's workarounds for that. Okay, so let's see the length of this. Sort set JM. Okay, so originally the slice we did was 50 words and we reduced it to 45. And now it's in order. So that's one way we can start to analyze text. In some cases, we don't need to know redundant words. We just can scale down the data set so it's faster to iterate over. There's a lot of practical reasons to do that. And we can put it in order. So I think a great approach to do that is to get your slice from the text file you're analyzing. You go ahead and create the set then you use the sorted method to generate the list and get it in alphabetical order. And that lets you it that gives you a couple of key advantages. It's a smaller, it's a reduced it's, um, it's a reduced amount of information. And then because it's in order, you can iterate through and pick out values much easier because you have a reference point. It's just not random it's not a random collection of information. And one more thing to show you 
So we took a pretty small data set. 50 words is, is not that much compared to the almost 100,000 words we uh, we have in this uh, JM book variable, which is the Gutenberg total text. So just to get an idea is if you're if you're working with a larger data set, it becomes much more important. So again, just to see it, the length of JN, JM John Milton underscore book is almost 100,000. And if we do set JM underbar book, it's got to think for a little bit. It's quite a lot of stuff to generate a set from. Oh, it returns it, that's why. Oops. All right, so I had a little time to think. I forgot that it actually returns the full set. That's funny. Okay, so it took a little bit of time to print all that out. Hopefully this doesn't crash on me. Okay. So I demonstrated that so you don't have to. A better approach would have been to say uh, set jm book equals jm book. Set might do the same thing. We'll see. Okay. So then the whole point of this is remember it was about ninety six thousand or so words just in the raw text form and if we do length of the set of that total text it gets down to 10,000 almost 11,000 so that's quite a large reduction in our data set so as we see the I mean my computer almost crashed trying to print out the set that just shows you that when working with large sets of information, it's good to start filtering because then you can optimize your searches uh, and functionality if that's what you want to do. Of course, sometimes you want to have all the information, like if you're counting word frequency or other things, but for certain applications, I'd say a lot of them, it's good to reduce the data set. So thank you for watching this video. We learned how you can take a slice of information from a large text and begin to organize it. And we ultimately were able to get a slice, reduce the amount of information in that slice, and then put it in an alphabetical order so that we're going to be able to iterate through, organize, and work with it in a much cleaner, faster way. So thank you for watching, I hope you have a great day, and stay tuned for more content.